Hey guys, welcome to my channel. So I'm just going to go through some of the stuff that I've been uh, finding on Brian Kohlberger tonight, ever since I got off the live. There'll be a few things that I already read on my live. I just kind of wanted to have it condensed in a small video or shorter video. So I might play a couple of the, the videos we already watched, but then I'm going to um, add some new ones. Okay, so I'm going to read a part of the Seattle Times article about Koberger. It says, Koberger, 28, was a graduate student in criminal justice at the Pullman campus and lived at an apartment complex in Pullman, the Moscow Police Department confirmed at a Friday news conference. He attended classes and finished the semester at WSU after the slains, a former classmate on Friday told the Seattle Times. B.K. Norton in the criminal justice graduate program at WSU in Pullman, along with Koberger, said they were in all four classes with him last semester. Koberger was in the class and finished the semester after the killings happened, Norton said. Wow. So he finished school after he freaking killed four people. So the first clip I want to play is from this guy that used to go on night runs with him. Well, Nicole, we're starting to get a better picture of Brian Koberger through online and other records, but also from someone who says that he knew Koberger, our affiliate in Pennsylvania, speaking with a man who says that some years ago he ran with Koberger on a regular basis. Listen to his reaction to the news that Koberger was arrested and charged for these murders in Moscow, Idaho. I used to uh, go on night runs with him because, like, I didn't want to go running at night by myself. So I would text him, like, hey, you want to go for a run? We'd go for six, seven-mile runs at night. So, like, when the, when I saw who it was, I was just in, like, complete shock. So I'm still kind of, like, shaking knowing about that. Like, it's just unreal to think somebody could actually do that to somebody. You know, like, it's absolutely, like, mind-boggling. Like, my adrenaline's still kind of running after finding that information out. So just, uh, yeah, I feel for the families, and I'm just happy justice can be served now. So. And we have also learned that Koberger studied criminal justice at an advanced level, having gotten a master's from DeSales University in Pennsylvania in 2022. According to the school there, he appears to once have posted on Reddit asking for volunteers for a research project where he was studying the criminal mind. And he wanted to know specific things about the emotional and psychological considerations for people who had been convicted of crimes, asking questions in a survey like why did you choose that victim what was the first move that you made how did you leave the scene so very eerie knowing he is now accused of going through all those thoughts having committed four murders according to police now he is currently a phd candidate in criminal justice at washington state university in pullman which is very close to moscow idaho a friend telling news nation that he went to pleasant valley high school in the area near the poconos this is near that scene where he was arrested this morning a news article from the local paper and school district documents tell us that he later worked there as a security guard so a strange background for someone to now be accused of such gruesome crimes that we also were able to confirm through county records out in Idaho that uh, someone of the same name, same age, so it appears to be this suspect Koberger had been stopped on a seatbelt violation in August. So if these charges against him are true, that means that he would have at least been in the Moscow, Idaho area at least twice. Nicole. And Evan, you confirmed that he did receive a master's from DeSales University there in Pennsylvania. That's also where he received his bachelor's degree as well, two years prior. Yeah, so a bachelor's degree in 2020, graduating in 2020 in psychology. Then he went on to study criminal justice criminology for a master's. According to uh, the program for the commencement in May 2022, the school telling us in a statement that he uh, graduated in June 2022. But we were able to find that document as well. And then we know he was continuing his studies in Washington state, really just across the Idaho state line as a Ph.D. candidate in that same sus subject, rather, criminology and criminal justice. OK, so now I'm going to play this recording that's going around that somebody called in to a channel or a podcast and people were thinking that it was Brian. OK, it's kind of a weird call in. Then there's some uh, comments under it where supposedly somebody that knows Brian said it does sound like him. So here, I'll, sh I'll show you the comments under it, and then I'll play the uh, audio. And real quick, this girl, Casey Farts, that is saying that it sounds like him, 
I'm going to play some of her TikToks that she made in a little bit where she explains how she knows Brian. She was friends with him, pretty good friends with him, where she shows text messages with him. She shows pictures with him. So she brings the receipts. She's not just faking it. Like she obviously really does know him. So the fact that she's saying it sounds like him, I feel like is pretty legit. Like, I mean, I trust her because she already proved that she does know him. Like I said, I'll show you. Actually, I'll play her TikToks after this audio. College town. And I've worked with uh, probably at least 10 Sigma Chi members. And, you know, the one thing that every single one of them I, I, I feel like has asked me is, if you were going to kill somebody, how would you get away with it? And I just wonder if maybe, if maybe this is, Nothing more than some kid in a fraternity trying to prove himself. And that was it. So you said some, you worked with five or six Sigma Chi kids and they asked you how, if you can kill somebody, they can get away with it? Yeah. Did I hear that right? Yeah. Oh and my God. I know that's a thing that just like maybe people say, trying to like have interesting conversation, but like just in my head, it's like, this is, it's always been these, these dudes that were in, in the fraternity. Hmm. And, and so it makes me wonder if it's a thing that that's in their, in their like culture that they ask to see how smart you are and whatever, and what kind of answer you come up with. And someone took it too far. Oh, uh, who, uh, what, what kind of dudes would ask you that? Well, that, that's, that's crazy as shit, man. That's a that's an outrageous statement, man. I, I mean, I'd write their names down. Yeah, man. Like I, uh, like I, like you know, I like horror movies and all that kind of stuff, and I'll watch those kind of things. But like when someone like in person says some stuff like that, it's kind of like jarring. It's like, what? Why are you saying stuff like the that? Cow. Yeah, that's I uh, man. Who who said that to you? Okay, so this is what Casey had to say about him. Um, his friend that basically said that this voice does sound like him. So here's her TikTok. Um, Can you hear? I don't have many followers, so I'm not yeah. sure who uh, this is going to reach out to. But regarding the case of the four Idaho uh, students that were slain and the arrest that was made, um, I used to be friends with Brian Koberger during my middle and high school years. And then before anyone comes at me and says that I'm just running for clout, I'm not. I have pictures that I will show you. I have screenshots that I will show you. I have your pictures that I show you. I went to school with the kid. I was friends with him. I'm, I wouldn't make something like this up. I am just an absolute shopper. I was heading to lunch when my mom called me and immediately I knew something was off because I have the type of family that we don't call each other. So if someone does call someone, um, we know something's bad. Uh, she called me and asked me about the, the murders. Um, I didn't know where she was going with it until she said that it was Brian Koberger. And naturally, I freaked out and called about eight of my friends. Um, my brother was really good friends with him. My other friend, Brandon, was really good friend, friends with him. I'm going to have a picture of him with him um, on the green screen as well. I'm shaking still. Um, but anyway, let me let me show you. This is back, this is Brandon, the one I was just talking about. It's his wife, Brianna, and that's me. This was back in 2017. Obviously, that's Brian. Um, still has the dead face that it's the eyes. I don't know. Um, but when I spoke to him back in 2017, he was clean. Um, he was a heavy heroin user uh, back in high school. And um, it was just nice to see the kid clean up. And at that time he said he was doing security detail. I believe it was out of school is what he told me. Um, but he seemed like he was better. Obviously that wasn't true. Here's another picture from a party that we had at Brandon's house. That's Brian there. He used to be a bigger kid as well. Um, but again, that's him. And then at the same wedding, I'm here, but he's back there. He was out sitting at the same table as me and my mother. Um, but he is back there enjoying a drink. I was sitting right next to him. We talked. 
he seemed fine. My mom sent me the old school yearbook. That was him. Brian Koberger, that's him. He went to Pleasant Valley. He graduated with, I think, my friend Christopher, a year um, older, sorry, younger than me. This is when he um, nonchalantly decided to make me drive him around the Poconos for heroin, and I had no idea. I thought I was just doing a nice deed because he needed something, and it turns out that he was getting heroin. Um, sorry, I'm like, hmm. my voice is shaking. I might make a part two. I probably have to. I don't have a six minute feature. I only have a three minute feature. I also talk really fast, so I'm sorry. More on this. Um, I don't. I don't really know what to say in this situation because it's so fucking crazy. Um, I'm not trying to put any names out there. Like, I'm not trying to get like my my friends involved. But it's it's crazy when you sit there and you realize that the person that was in your parents' home, um, in your friend's home, you were in their car, you were in his house. I knew his mom. She was a substitute teacher at Pleasant Valley. Um, it's it's crazy to think that. I don't know. It, it's it's mm. okay. So I wanted to freeze frame some of this so we could read it. So the gray is him and the blue is her. So he's the gray text and then she's the blue text. So it says, which either oh, I don't know how you didn't understand that. LOL. Okay, I read it fast. Ah, I got you. I'm so thankful that after everything you still invited me to your party. I will be there for sure if I'm invited for sure. And it says, ha ha, you're invited, Brian. It's not a problem. You know I love you guys. Always will, even if we stop talking one day. Again, um, he obviously no longer has a Facebook, but they still allow you to filter old messages. Um, here's something I invited him to a party back in 2014. Um, he seemed fine. It's, it's crazy just what can switch in someone's brain. Um, so this is her saying to Brian, I would like to hand you a big congratulations for lying to me about driving you around. I should have added it up beforehand, but thought I was doing something nice for someone. So thank you. If you would have gotten caught, I would have gotten in trouble just for driving you around, not even knowing why. Needles for your aunt? Wow. Really great story. Bye. He says, I'm in rehab. She says, I know that. He says, I'm sorry again. And I, after the whole heroin incident, I didn't know that he was literally making me drive to get him heroin until Brandon told me. So I messaged him a pretty rotten um, message just because I was pissed. I didn't know there was fucking heroin in my car. Um, but this was, again, 2013. I was two years graduated from high school. He then said he was in rehab. Um, he would randomly message me after that. Says, no crap, where at? It says possibly ESU, most likely Centenary in New Jersey, where my sister goes, criminal justice. You? She says, I've been accepted to different places, but I'm starting out cheap at Northampton. And he says, my rents are trying to push Northampton for me. So his parents, he's saying. Um, she says, it's not that bad. I'd rather save the money and start out with two years and transfer later. My mom has been pushing it on me for a while now, too. So basically, yeah, she's just asking, like, where are you going to school, it sounds like. And he says, possibly ESU, most likely Centenary in New Jersey, where my sister goes. Criminal justice, you. So she must be asking what his major was. This is him mentioning um, he wanted to study criminal justice. Again, back in 2013, he was already hoping to do that. And then that obviously fell through because he said he went to rehab. Um but apparently he went back at it. And again, in 2017, that's when it seemed like everything was fine and he was doing great for himself. So it was kind of crazy that this fucking happened. Um, but yeah, this is also talking about, you know, um, hanging out with Brian, chilling with them. So this isn't with Brian. This is her talking to somebody else about Brian, it sounds like. So she says, LOL, no, I'm busy all Saturday until the night unless I convince my mom to let me stay Sunday night again like I did this past weekend. He says, what do we do if, per se, I chilled with you Saturday? She says, night? And he says, yeah. I don't know, man. I think Kim will be over. He says, I, I'll see if I can make arrangements for you with a heart. So she says, LOL, I mean... Brian can chill too, if you want. He says, nah, me and Brian weren't friends for the last two months. Now we're acquaintances, kinda. 
oh god what now um and then brandon said they're like not friends anymore and this happened a lot because of what he was doing his addiction and he had some anger issues uh i know he did kickboxing um to kind of help with that but <sighs> but again I wish I had more thick pictures. Um, I'm sure I have plenty from MySpace days, but for some reason I cannot get onto my MySpace. Um, when I click to search, it just gives me like broken photos. And I'm, I'm sure I had more pictures with him because again, I did a lot with him. We hiked a mountain by my parents' house together. He mentioned that in one of the messages I had with him. Um, again, I'm so sorry if this is really fast. I don't really know what to say. Um, this never happened to me before. <laughs> I really didn't have um old friend of a murderer on my 2022 bingo list. So yeah, that's him. So someone had commented and said that, um, what does something that you knew about him five to 10 years ago have to do with anything? The point of the matter is the police want anyone who knew him to reach out, to try to get an idea of who he was, regardless of it was five to 10 years ago or three minutes ago. Like they want to know, they want to be able to piece it together. And even if it doesn't really help them because it's that long ago, at the end of the day, I knew him. I was friends with him. And I'm not trying to turn this into a whole, I knew him. Oh my God. Nothing like that. I want to be able to get my statement across. I want to be able to like show my story, tell my story. I want my friends to be able to tell my story. I want my brother to, my mom to, which by the way, my mom and my brother both had called the tip line and gave them their statements. I have a whole freaking novel typed out in my freaking email with the screenshots, which are like 25, by the way. I'm, I just want to be able to make sure that I, I don't know how to explain it. I just want to be able to make sure that I can convey what I know. Um, if it helps or if it doesn't, at the end of the day, they were, there are four victims who were brutally murdered. Their families, their friends, they want answers. And I have answers, maybe not of why he did it, but I know who he was. And I just want to be able to, I don't know. And then someone else said, I might get subpoenaed because of the video. Fuck it. Send me a subpoena. I'll make my statement. I'll look him dead in the eye and tell him what a piece of shit he is. He can rot in fucking hell. And then, are, is it only these four people that he killed? I don't know. At the end of the day, it's terrifying. And I'm going to need more than melatonin to sleep tonight. Definitely. It's me because, <laughs> you know, thankful I invited him to a party in 2014. He's like, you know, I love you guys. Always will, you know, even if we stop talking one day. Okay, so here's an article where somebody that knew Brian actually in high school talked a little bit about it, his experience with him. So it says, a Brian Kohlberger was also listed online as studying psychology in 2018 at Northampton Community College in Albrightsville, where he was a member of Psi Beta and got involved in raising awareness of hidden disabilities. He was also employed as a part-time school security officer by the Pleasant Valley School District for several years until last year. Nick McLaughlin... 26, who was friends with Kohlberger in high school and vocational school and had been following the Moscow murders, told the Daily Beast he was floored to see Kohlberger had been arrested. He described Kohlberger as a down-to-earth member of his friend group who was overweight when they graduated junior year, but at the start of senior year, Kohlberger was thinner than a rail and turned aggressive, he said. He also picked up a new hobby, taking boxing classes. He always wanted to fight somebody. He was bullying people. We started cutting him off from our friend group because he was 100% a different person, McLaughlin said. Asked what might have contributed to the change that summer, McLaughlin said, we have no idea. McLaughlin went on to say that he and Koberker would spend half the school day at Pleasant Valley High before heading to Monroe County Vocational School, where they took classes related to heating and air conditioning work. He said Koberker also took criminal justice courses to potentially become a cop. McLaughlin said the friendship ended when Koberker began putting moves on his girlfriend. He was like reaching out to her saying, I can get us a bottle and we hang out tonight. So now reading this, it makes sense kind of like his mood change, his personality type change, him losing a bunch of weight because that's when he started using heroin, it sounds like from what Casey said. So that I think that makes sense. All of a sudden he had a drastic weight change. He a personality change. He just like acted, started acting different and was real aggressive. Well, Picking up a heroin habit will change you in those ways. So it just makes sense of what, you know, these people are um, 
their stories definitely make sense. So yeah, it kind of paints a, a, a picture of who this Brian guy is. So it gives us a better look at who he is, I should say. Okay, so somebody posted this. So it says, this is crazy and really sad in all honesty. Roll and I were friends with Brian until we started doing things that were way beyond underage drinking and having normal teen fun. It sucks for everyone. I do hope justice is served. No doubt, but I just wish it would have ended differently. Breaking news, 28-year-old suspect arrested in Idaho murders. Ryan Kohlberger was identified as a suspect accused in stabbing deaths at four University of Idaho students. So somebody's just posting this that knew him and with some pictures to show, kind of prove that they know him, I guess. So the next clip I want to play is from ABC. It's just a quick clip where it basically says that Steve sees connections between Kaylee and Brian, but he's not ready to say what they are yet. So I'll be anxious to hear what, what that is. I mean, what are, what are the connections? We all kind of want to know, but we'll have to wait, I'm sure. So I wonder how long that'll take for him to be able to come out and say anything. They might have to actually wait till... Well, maybe he'll wait till the affidavit comes out, I bet. Well, at least he'll probably be, law enforcement will probably tell him to wait, I would guess, because it would be a part of the investigation until the, the report comes out. But I, I'm not sure. I guess we'll see if he'll wait or not or if that's what is going to happen. So here it is. It's just a little clip. The father of one of the murder victims, Steve Gonzalez, and his attorneys say they see connections between Kaylee and the suspect, but they aren't ready to talk about exactly what those connections are. The arrest comes the same day as his family is holding a celebration of life for Kaylee. So Joseph Benson posts from WFLA posts, Koberger's DNA has also been matched to genetic material recovered at the off-campus house where the students were stabbed to death, according to the sources. An FBI team from Philadelphia has been tracking him for four days in the area where he was arrested. So here's another post I wanted to share. It says, could the Corner Club be an integral piece to the puzzle after all? This also confirms what I read posted by a local. Re Adam? Everyone was saying Adam was the bartender. This local said he was the bouncer. When another poster asked what M meant by I told Adam everything, the local replied that she told Adam everything about the creeper and Adam and the bartender kicked him out. That's it. No deep, dark secrets. Now that I see from this picture that Adam is indeed the bouncer, I believe what this person said to be true. Now, before you downvote me to hell because you only read the title, take a second to read this. This comment on Reddit from a supposed local apparently adds some desperately needed context to the conversation between Kaylee, Maddie, and HG that is heard on CCTV footage of them walking to the food truck about a conversation between Maddie and Adam. It makes total sense and is the most logical explanation for what they were talking about. And the reason I included this is because I think it's interesting because what if she was talking about Brian? What if he was the stalker and he was around that night and, and that's who they were telling Adam about? Because if this is true and it is about a stalker or a creeper, then what if Brian was around? Well, we know he was around, but I mean, what if that he was like creeping him out and they seen him and they told Adam about him that night? So I just thought I, I'd include that. Okay, so the next one is Brian Enton going to his parents' house and knocking on the door. And then right after that, I'm going to play some drone footage from his parents' house that somebody took from today. Okay, so here is uh, Brian Enton and then the drone footage. Very dark here.
I'm, I'm a reporter. Is there anything you can say about Brian? Okay, thank you. I'm, I'm a reporter. Is there anything you can say about Brian? Okay, thank you. When I've lost my way, then the stars align to bring the changes. Cause it can't, no it can't be bad forever. You are the proof, are the evidence that it can't be bad. No it can't. Them by. 
Kiss to the broken man who stood in water when he heard you can Cause it shows me that faith is more than sight Someday we could all be free 